there's a strong possibility that you know who Kai happens to be at this point. And he gained a great deal of attention through YouTube due to an interview he did with KMPH after a melee that he was involved with down in Fresno in early February. As the Huffington Post describes it here, he whacked an alleged assailant claiming to be Jesus and clutching a woman in a bear hug. That is, that's what the assailant was doing. And then Kai helped out with his hatchet. And specifically, they go into the story pointing out that suspect Jet Simmons McBride allegedly ran his car into a an African-American Pacific gas and electric worker, pinning this person to his truck. Bystanders say that McBride was yelling that he was Jesus Christ and here to save the world from black people. And apparently he turned on a bystander, Tanya Baker as well, who was trying to help the pg e worker and wrapped his arms around her in a violent bear hug. That's when Kai stepped up with the hatchet and helped out until the police arrived, along with some pg e workers. As it turns out, he lives around here in, in Humboldt, and he doesn't really have a house. I mean, he's described as houseless or homeless. But... Yesterday, I went up to the Arcata Plaza to talk to him and asked him what he's been doing. I drank beer after the incident and uh, smoked smoked a nice fat joint, kind of mellowed out. Uh, started hitchhiking back up north. I was like, oh man, I want to get on over to the Redwoods and like smoke some herbs and sit and chill in some trees and stuff. And So I got on up all the way to Santa Rosa hitchhiking. I was uh, uh, sleeping in tents, stuff, you know, like uh, still had that bag. Then this production company that the producer from the Kardashians heads up and the real world and stuff, uh, she, uh, um, she, she came on up to Santa Rosa. Well, she actually flew all the way up to Arcata. And then I didn't make it all the way up to Arcata because, like, people was like, oh, you're that hatchet wielding hitchhiker. I don't know if I'm going to give you a ride right now. I mean, like, since then, like, over the course of the month, people have actually been um, giving me rides, like, out of nowhere, like, cars I've, I've never ridden in before. Uh, I, I know I, I ran out of this one uh, um, corporate store, like multinational corporate store with like three thirty packs of Budweisers, like since since uh, February second, and uh, <laughs> like this dude recognized me and had seen that shit on Jimmy Kimmel. He was like, "Oh shit!" And so he starts running after me as I'm like booking her out the door, carrying ninety beers. He runs on over. And uh, he tries grabbing me, so I angle myself over. He slides off like 60 beers, and so it, it just explodes and like starts rolling all over the ground. So it's basically like he Donkey Konged himself, because then he'd have to run on over a bunch of little um, beer-filled barrels in order to get to me. I was just booking around off a 30-pack. Came on over right over here, like opened it on up. Mother strewed it over in front of like a bunch of people. I was like, yo, happy Valentine's. Yeah, yeah and nothing came of that. The police didn't come after you over that one because you, you speak so openly about these things. You'd think that at some point. It's like, you know, that video already went viral. I mean, yeah, if, if motherfucking Walmart or Target or any of those places were to bring any of that to trial, they'd mostly be able to try to charge you with as a fucking misdemeanor. And then, by putting it into trial, that videographic evidence would become public. And if you don't think that would be viral, me skateboarding out of a mother Walmart with $2,000 worth of camping gear after my other backpack got stolen, and a store detective running after me, mother security patrol is coming on over me, getting on over behind a restaurant, dipping all the stuff into a bag, running over across the street one direction, changing clothes, changing hairstyle, putting the bag so it looks like a different color, running over another direction. You know, like, if they if they put out videos of me doing that... Um, <laughs> well, how, how often do you, do you steal? Is this sort of a da daily occurrence? I can't call it. I mean, if you were to say, okay, in the last uh, three months, how many times have you shoplifted? Mm, you know, I don't, I don't hit up shops. That's the thing. I mean, how many, how many days have, have we been in a war with corporations who try to take away our bill of rights and elect, um, you know, phony, uh, not even politicians really, because it's like they just basically elect policies. And so if a person writes a, a, a pleasant enough argument for them and, and their, their corporation, then they get elected. But it's not really the person getting elected. It's all, all, all the paper that they put out, you know what I mean? Because even when a person's in office, like, it's like their hands are tied. And not everybody's got the balls to walk in downtown LA. Well, f 
cops and surfers and um, male ladies are getting shot up and they just like whip out a board that says just do it, do it, do it and whip a bandana over my face and walk down the street aiming that board at a car, like not any car but at police cars like it's a, like it's a rifle, you know, because I was like alright, you're going to shoot up surfers, you're going to shoot up male ladies, why don't you shoot up me? I'm pretty sure that would attract some international attention. Come on, do it. And uh, they, they, they let off after that. It was pretty cool. So where have you been staying? Because you are you are homeless or, or houseless. Uh, what, what do you what do you do? I'm homeless. I just um, I contribute. Like I, I know Anthony and Anna had uh, allowed me to stay over at their place, like somewhere near McKinleyville, uh, within a couple hundred miles or something. And uh, yeah, so you know, I woke up the next day. Uh, you know, they was cleaning cleaning the house, so I did all the dishes from the night before, the pots and pans and stuff. Uh, went on over, scooped the dog poo from the back porch, fed the garden. Garden was really happy about that. And I, I could tell because it was all green. And so, uh, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, smoke some herbs with them, you know, like, just... So, 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 so you, you, you have a place to stay then, it sounds like. Well, I don't really possess a place. Like, I don't got to script a rent for it or anything. But, I mean, like, I contribute where I go, and people have been really good to me, so I'm happy to keep, you know, like, reciprocating and, and enjoying, like, that people are helping me out now. I, I, I appreciate that so much. This so much. And how long have you been living the the lifestyle? Because uh, now I think I've, I read that you're 24, so you don't have a, uh, an apartment, but you are able to survive and people help you out. But how long have you been doing this? Well, I was a latchkey kid when I was young. I used to eat dog food out of the cupboards because there was no food. So uh, I can't really call it. First time I ever went hitchhiking, hitchhiking, I was uh, 16. I mean, I'd hitchhiked before then, but it was only like, you know, maybe 50, 100 miles. But like first time I actually went across mountains and uh, started working in a different town, construction, and got a little place. You know, I was, I was 16 years old. So you've been doing this for a while, then. What would you recommend it? It, it sounds like it'd be somewhat stressful to an extent, well, to to a degree, because you really don't know what's going to happen next week or even tomorrow. Well, I'm in no means revolutionary. Well, actually. Yo, okay, maybe the, the level of commitment, like, but that, that's not something that I can talk about. Um, Socrates, though, is the one who pioneered kind of a lifestyle like this. But he was also kind of watching the way that native tribes were, were doing it over in Europe. And that was that uh, when you get old enough, you leave the uh, the atomic family that, that you know, you'd, you'd been birthed from and just, like, you know, kind of become part of the community. Uh, and, I mean, that, that's called the spirit walk. Um, or like a walkabout if you're in Australia or whatever, but you know, like it's that point in time where you leave the safety net that you built up and go and strike out on your own, you know what I mean? I think that's necessary for people to really develop themselves as, as people. Oh, sure, and, and I think that's only natural that once you reach a certain age, you do have to head out on your own, but uh, I, mean, I, I think for me, living in an apartment, I, I don't live... Uh, the the high lifestyle, but uh, I'm looking at, okay, I can go home tonight and sleep in a bed, but you've chosen not to do that, and I'm just curious if that's something you'd recommend others do, or living, and you're not on the street necessarily, but that seems to be an option periodically, but is this something that you would recommend others do? It's not really a choice. I don't got a social security number. I couldn't find a job because people was asking me for IDs and stuff. Cop comes up and hassles me, whips on the sirens at 3 o'clock in the morning, trying to find, you know, even, even like a desk job. Can't even do it without a social security number. But, I mean, like, there's ways of contributing to the community without being on paperwork. So... I seek what I can what I can find out, like, you know, medicines I can learn from the forest, like, uh, how to help people with that. I mean, when people are in real-life situations in orchards where there's no cops around because cops don't give a f*** when you don't make enough money, you know? So I read that you were uh, arrested here in Arcata a couple of weeks ago, maybe uh, a weekend or two ago. What, what was that all about? Oh, last Sunday? Well, Friday night, there was this... Uh, uh, apparently a Grateful Dead dance and cops was going around looking for an after party uh, a bunch of college students showed up at college parties uh, wearing Grateful Dead gear uh, I guess maybe they mistook the, the parties for a Grateful Dead dance and so they went over and busted them up <laughs> this one party the APD had to call the mother UPD up for uh, backup and so um, the, the next day the cops went up to all the deadheads and started hassling them because they're pissed off because they couldn't find the dance. They're like, well, we're still going to get at you anyways, like roughed them up and shit. Meanwhile, 
Three flash mobs from Humboldt State U converged at this one house party with a bonfire in the back and, and created one of the biggest parties in Humboldt State Union history. So on Sunday, the cops finally found out about it. Uh, it was rock and steady till 4 a.m. And they didn't, they didn't even hear about it until the next day. And so Sunday, they came on up to me, and I was standing with a bunch of deadheads. But there was this one girl named Jenny from uh, Cultural Anthropology over at Humboldt State U. And she was wearing a Grateful Dead shirt, this one I'm wearing right here, like the uh, 15th anniversary. Yeah, she was wearing this one. I was wearing a dead mouse shirt, and she's got like she's got these real beautiful dreads, and I mean, she she like she walks like a hippie, talks like a hippie, you know. So uh, the uh, the cops they, they they came on up because we was we was sitting in front of the U.S. Bank, you know, just occupying the space. It's a planner, you know. And so we were sitting there and you know smoking a cigarette, and cops came up to hassle us, and then they came up uh, onto me and they're like, "You're being detained, and you need to give me your real name." I was like, "Man, you're f-ing giving you." Sh- you know what the fourth and fifth amendment are? Don't give me any lip, blah blah blah. I was like, am I free? You are not free to go. I was like, what's your name? And he was like, Officer Miller. I was like, Officer? I don't know any I don't know any kid's name. Officer, that's a fake name. And so he uh he's like, What's your name? I was like, just Kai, and then he like grabbed me and threw me into cuffs like real tight. I was like, that's a state of California court recognized alias for me. And the legal name that applies to me. What I do not apply to is K of Lawrence McGilvery, sucker. And he's like, quit resisting, smash my head off the f- back of the cruiser. All the while, he just thinks it's a bunch of, you know, deadheads. So he's like, yeah, nobody's going to listen to them, not realizing there's a cultural anthropology student standing there in a deadhead shirt. And so they smashed my face off the back of the f- cruiser. They took me on down to Eureka County Jail. And so, like, he sits me in the, in the car in these tight-ass cuffs, like, for half an hour. And like I felt pins and needles when we finally got those off. Like he was trying to kill off this guitar hand, but I was like, I, I flexed all the muscles he was putting it on because I knew what he was trying to do. So like I'm really lucky he still got got proper nerve function in this mother hand after that. But hey, he he popped on in there, and the sheriffs. They looked down over at this little slip of paper that said Edward Carl Nicodemus on it. Now, this is this is a name that's been floating around, apparently, I've heard since then, uh, around a bunch of people who've been opening up bank foreclosed houses across America. Now, I've got one person being in, like, 52 states, 52 states at once. But, yeah, there was, like, uh, there, there, there was like the sheriffs looked at the file and they says there's an FBI stamp on this and a CIA stamp on this. I look over at the police and they're like, you want to bring us a regular intake one of this one of those times? Looks over at that. Um, uh, I think his first name was Officer. He gave. Uh, yeah. So um, they, they looked on over at him and says that. And uh, then they look over at me and it says, do you need any uh, medical attention? I look on over at, at that, that officer kid and looked him straight in the eyes. I was like, no, this f- sucker ain't hard. You kidding me? Just give me them socks back. They're comfy. Walked on in the jail cells with these pink and purple fuzzy socks. They were so comfy. It was like wearing slippies in jail. Oh. No. So how'd you how'd you get out? What? Uh, how long did they hold you for? Well, they called immigration because there's no documentation of, of me uh, ever crossing any borders and stuff. I just uh, I, I advised them that the name that applies to me on paper is also connected to uh, Native Reserve and uh, would be considered full status Indian. So like, um, yeah, basically the immigration called him back and says just let him go. So five hours later I was out of there, went on over, caught a shower at the Raven Project, changed some clothes, came on over to Arcata and I was drinking in the plaza again by nine. So you don't have a court date on that, Ben? Oh, they gave me a slip of paper, and they, like, says, you need to sign this with a couple of guns at their side. And so, I mean, like, how effective is it at, um, you know, getting an agreement from somebody if you're holding a gun at their head? When you say that immigration call, that's because you were born in Canada. Um, where was that conceived? That I don't know. Where were you conceived? I can't call it. You must have some idea. Where, where, were, where were you conceived? I honestly never asked those people that. I was more interested in who they was because I was like, all right, well, I remember what she was like when I was a kid, so I want to I want to learn from history some um, experiences. And when did you leave Canada? Uh, I hopped the fence a while ago. It's not, it's not the first time over here. I, there's, there's native reserves like all along the uh, borders. So. 
you're not here in the in the country legally. No, I'm here in reality. But is that something that you're concerned about because you talk about it again so openly that you could possibly find yourself a foul of the law at some point? Well, legally, I don't exist. So why are the mother police officers coming over and hassling me? <laughs> And what uh, what was your childhood like? <laughs> um, I I talked about that with North Coast Journal just the other day. Like uh, growing up, um, there's a lot of remnant kind of uh, feelings and behaviors that got left over from those native boarding schools. If you've ever researched those, uh, the British government.